It's the year 21XX, an apocalyptic future ruled by machines. Decades before, humanity lost the war and is now on the brink of destruction. Only a few resistance camps are left struggling to survive, and a group of badass heroes behind enemy lines are the only hope to save the world. Heroes that are ready to blaze some chrome. This game kicks ass. It's incredible. I'm gonna say something, and I understand before I say it, that it's a very bold claim to make, but I stand by it. We don't need Contra anymore. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? What we have here is a very rare example of a new game taking old school game mechanics and creating something original that completely surpasses the very thing it's inspired by. I've heard a lot of people comparing Blazing Chrome to Contra 3 The Alien Wars. I actually find it a lot more similar to Contra Hardcore for Sega Genesis. It's a dark gritty future and there's machines all over the place and machine bosses, multiple characters to select from, and there's even some levels that look like they're straight out of Hardcore. Which is a great thing for me because Contra Hardcore is my favorite Contra game of all time. And if you're familiar with Contra, you already know how to play Blazing Chrome. You jump and shoot your way through hordes of enemies and have to be really careful you don't get hit. Because yes, it is a one hit death. As it should be for this style of game. It can be brutally difficult at times, unless you chicken out and play easy mode of course. There's three difficulty settings by the way. Easy mode gives you seven lives and unlimited continues. Normal mode gives you five lives and unlimited continues. And you have to beat the game on normal mode to unlock hardcore mode. Which to me is the best way to play the game, but it isn't for everyone. Three lives, three continues, you lose your continues, back to the title screen with you. But you do get some help in the form of power-ups. There's four different weapons you can swap through, and unlike Contra, none of them suck. There's usually that one weapon players actively avoid because it's terrible, and will get you killed for using it. In Blazing Chrome, even the standard machine gun works well, and it never felt like I was struggling to survive because I was stuck with a weak weapon. If you die in this game, it's 100% your fault. The laser shoots little mini lasers, or you can charge it up into an epic beam of destruction. There's a wave gun that forms a wave of energy that you can wiggle around, and it's extremely powerful. It kind of reminds me of the directional whip from Super Castlevania in a way. And the grenade launcher, as expected, launches explosive grenades. That's great for taking out groups of enemies, or causing massive damage to bosses. And of course, if you die, you lose whatever weapon that you currently were using. So it's important to remember, if you notice you're about to die, switch to your regular weapon real quick so you don't actually lose anything. To succeed in this game, it's a good idea not to stick with just one weapon, and constantly switch them for different situations, which is easier said than done whenever a barrage of enemies are surrounding you from every part of the screen. There's also support power-ups that help you in your quest, my favorite being the shield because it's almost like having two extra lives. It absorbs two hits before you take damage. Or you can get the attack power-up that provides a little robot shooting alongside you. They also give you the ability to double jump, something that's always appreciated. And I really enjoy the mech suit sections, kind of like a Mega Man X with the ride armors. And there's also achievements that are unlockable, provided you beat the level in the suit. Something I'm still trying to do, it seems like mine always get destroyed just before I kill the boss. Speaking of achievements, there's a healthy set of achievements and trophies that keep you coming back to the game and playing through all the different modes if you really want 100% it. One of them requires you to beat mirror mode, which flips the screen completely from the original level perspective. There's another that requires you to beat boss rush mode, which forces you to fight all the bosses in a row while attempting to avoid a game over. Sure, you can beat a normal playthrough in about an hour and a half to two hours, quicker if you've already become familiar with the stages, and some people may complain that it's a short game. But games like this don't need to be long. These style of games should be shorter action-packed experiences, but the real fun of this game is actually going back and playing it over and over and getting better and better as a player. Learning what to expect and learning the boss patterns. After a couple of playthroughs, I found myself destroying bosses without losing any lives. Compared to the first playthrough where I was going through multiple 
continues, and bleeding lives faster than a turd hits the water. Memorization and reaction time is a key feature to success, and there's no better way to demonstrate this than showing you the Turbo Tunnel. Even though it's technically not a tunnel, but there's a Battletoads-like section similar to the Turbo Tunnel. Nowhere near as hard though, but still challenging. Exclamation marks warning you of upcoming spike traps, and pits that get worse and worse as it goes on. It was awesome. <laughs> There's six stages total, four on the map initially that you have to get through before the other two appear, and each one feels different with a variety of deadly environments. City streets filled with enemies, an absolute war zone, hover bike sections leading to an armored train, a desert area hiding an underground hive using machines and monsters. My favorite though is the second half of stage four. That changes the game's camera angle and sends you blasting through a tunnel. It's so badass. And of course the boss fight is in the same perspective, and it reminds me of the very first boss in Star Fox 64, the one that you fight when you go through the secret waterfall in Corneria. You guys know what I'm talking about. This guy. The bosses feel just as different as the stages too, and there's so many of them. They range from giant mechanical monstrosities shooting balls of energy, smaller battles requiring you to react quickly to fast incoming attacks from blades, boss battles while riding the hover bikes, taking on a giant laser cannon in a train while it throws big metal orbs at you and you're trying to avoid the giant beam, there's so much variety to be found here, and that only scrapes the surface of the bosses. One of the coolest was the big worm monster that jumps over you and drops slime balls, and it also pops out from underneath surprising you. So you have to dodge just before it comes up, and when it dies it bleeds into the slime and then it all turns red. It was such a cool effect. And near the end of the game, there's a boss that pulls you into a virtual world. And look at that. That looks just like my channel banner right there. Purple lasers. See, here's my channel banner right here. Now look at the game. If the developers are watching this video and you would like to add me as DLC, I would love to join the awesome cast of characters. I'll do it for free. Speaking of characters, initially there's only two characters to choose from. A girl with a gun, a robot with a gun who is instantly awesome because he does have a mohawk. And after you beat the game, you get access to more characters that actually play differently. They don't use the in-game weapons since they're close-range melee-based warriors, so it requires you to change up your strategy. A ninja with a sword and a woman with a similar attack, but it's more fiery. It was cool playing as these extra characters, but for me personally, I prefer the run-and-gun aspect of the game a bit more. But there is a playstyle for everyone depending on what game playstyle you prefer. And I can't believe I haven't mentioned the music. The music is incredible. It's all retro synth style 90s console gaming music. It's a thing of beauty just to listen to some of these tracks. The end credits music is pure gold. It uses The Danger by Christine in a hilarious homage to the action movies of the 80s like Commando, a movie about a muscle-bound military man blasting away bad guys while completely invincible, then it ends with a completely out of place song. Awesome. I don't want to make this review about Konami at the end, but something needs to be said. Konami should be embarrassed 
over their lack of anything like this. Sure, they're releasing Contra Rogue Core, which, yeah, I'll give it a chance, but my first impression from watching the trailer, it, it kind of looks like ass. We'll see how it plays. But this is what happens when you let these big epic franchises just sit around and rot away. Others will rise up to replace you, and that's what's happened here. We just recently had Bloodstained, which was an amazing Castlevania-inspired experience. And now we have Blazing Chrome, which isn't only inspired by Contra, it surpasses it in every way. This is better than Contra. Konami, we don't need you anymore. I'm ready for Blazing Chrome 2. Let's do this. Blazing Chrome has a guaranteed spot in my top 10 video games of this year, for sure. It's old school 2D shoot 'em up action perfected. If you're interested in checking it out for yourself, why don't you head on over to my description, click on my Amazon affiliate links, and snag yourself a $20 Xbox or PlayStation code to download it. Seriously, it's worth it. I'll catch you guys later. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button with all of your strength. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on social media or go into my community tab for updates. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the channel directly on Patreon. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.